So orchestrating a Tutti passage, the first thing you need to do, and I've said it many times before, and I'm sure there are some of you that are going to roll your eyes, but go ahead and do it at your own behest. You have to understand the harmony, okay? I've said it again and again, understanding orchestration, getting better at orchestration, is really getting better at harmony. So let's look at measure 95. And the first thing we want to understand, let's say 95, 96, 97, 98. Okay, so just let's look at, them, look at them as a whole, but we'll focus mostly on 95 for the orchestration. So the first thing when you see kind of a dense passage or what appears to be a dense passage is to understand what are the different events taking place. Okay, so for example, if we look in the woodwinds, the upper woodwinds, we see this rhythm, right? We see this um, kind of very accented thing, you know, da da half, da da half, quarter. All right, so that's the first event that I see taking place. Do we see it taking place elsewhere? Well, yes, we look down and we see the violins are doing the same thing. So we see one idea, okay? And let's just assume that's the melody. That's not always the best way because the melody doesn't have to be the most complicated rhythm, but it often is the case, right? And again, if you know your own style, then, you know, this will be a lot quicker. So now let's look for the bass, okay? So in the bassoons, we see kind of these, these are kind of the lowest notes. Um, we see also in the tuba, and we see the double bass as well as the cellos, okay? Um, the horns and some of the other instruments are doing the same rhythm as a bass, okay? So one could say that we have two basic events taking place. We have the da 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 right? And then dum bum 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 right? We have two basic events, but maybe we could even say three because... You know, there's the true bass, which would be like the bassoons and the tuba, and then kind of the intermediary stuff. I already talked in previous videos about how to um, examine the chords, but it's something that just takes a lot of repetition. So we're going to first look at the woodwinds. And let's look at the bassoons, okay? Because they are clearly doing something different from the rest of everyone else. So what are the bassoons doing? Okay, certainly so they're clearly reinforcing the melody, but they have their own independent part, one could say. And they're on a B flat, okay? So very quickly, we should be able to figure out the harmony, okay? We see the key signature is three flats, so it's either going to be E flat major or C minor. Yes, in theory, we could be in another key because you don't want to change the keys too often. It gets confusing, but you have to use your, your, your brain here, okay? We don't see any accidentals, okay? In addition, given that the bassoons are the bass here, they're doing the B flat, Well, if we were in C minor, typically the sevenths, the B, uh, which would be a B flat, would be raised to be natural. Okay, it doesn't have to be, all right, but you have to start using your brain. In addition, why would it be hanging out on the B flat? It would make much more sense that we're in E flat major because the B-flat is the dominant, and that's a place that we often hang out on because it creates suspense. It's just, it's very much linked with the tonic. So based on all this information, we can safely assume, yes, you're going to make a lot of assumptions, and it's about being educated in your assumptions. We can safely assume that this is some kind of dominant, okay? Now, the particular flavor of the dominant we will examine shortly, but we know we're on the five, okay? Now let's look at the upper woodwinds. I would recommend starting from the flutes and going down. It's just my personal preference because the little bit thorn in the speed is always going to be the transposing instrument, which is the clarinets, okay? So you can, you can start with the clarinets, you know, get the hard part out the way, but I would like to kind of get a feel much quicker. 
because by the time we get to the clarinet, it might become obvious. Let's look. So the flutes are in F and C, uh, uh, F and B flat, and oboes. Okay, so we have B flat, E flat, F, B flat. Okay, and we're not going to add the clarinets just yet. Listen with the bassoons, please. So what we have is a chord that, you know, in classic harmony doesn't really exist. Okay, we don't really learn it about this in, in school. If you do take harmony classes, um, like the time of Bach, yeah, you would come across this chord, but the E flat, which is a fourth above the bass, would be considered a suspension. Okay, meaning it's not really part of the chord, it's a delay until we get to the D. For example, okay, but that's classical harmony. Okay, you have your own harmony. And so my, my particular style, and certainly you'll see with a lot of the minimalist, so-called minimalist composers, that this harmony is, uh, you know, very common. I don't know if there's an official name. I call it like the suspended chord because there's that suspension but it's functioning as its own independent chord. Okay, it's still a dominant. So now let's look at the clarinets. Okay, so you see the clarinets, you know, you know I, I know, it's, it's transposing, so there's that like, mo that brief second of like annoyance or flicker of like hesitation because it's just, it's just not as instantaneous. And I honestly don't think it'll ever be instantaneous unless, even if you're a clarinetist, you're, you know, you're used to seeing it like that. You're not going to, you still have to transpose when you're looking in this context. Okay. So you have to accept there's always going to be a slight delay. Now the clarinets, we see they are doing seconds. So automatically, you don't have much option. We've already looked at the harmony. So here you can use your brain. You have to use your brain. So if this is the chord, at least in the upper hand, well, what are the notes the clarinets are doing? It has to be mi flat and fa. There's no other choice. Do you understand? If that's not clear, then you probably need to really work on harmony, okay? You, you get it seriously, okay? You, you need to put down the orchestration a little bit. I mean, you can keep it up just in a superficial sense, just to kind of observe, but you really, you got to get nitty gritty hands deep in harmony, hands deep in harmony. 